Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing kind of our tutorial series slash coverage of 1.5 uh, with the top five Asian states you might have been sleeping on in patch 1.5.3. Uh, this of course implies states, uh, Asian states that you are not sleeping on. These are the ones that are already have thought of been being good, uh, you know, from earlier iterations of patch 1.5 as well as patch 1.4, but we're going to try and introduce some new ideas and focus on new states. Uh, namely, there's going to be kind of three considerations that really inform uh, what is going to make a good state that you might have been sleeping on, and these are new considerations in 1.5. The first of which being that uh, rice farms are OP, and they're still OP currently in 1.5.3. Uh, they are effectively two buildings for the price of one. What they did was they inc they doubled the employment level, they doubled the inputs, they doubled the outputs, and I know what you might be thinking, hey, that's reasonable. Uh, what they didn't double was they didn't double the arable land usage, they didn't double the construction cost, and they didn't double the infrastructure usage, so you're kind of getting now two buildings for the price of one. You can see here it is the same amount of construction for this rice farm as well as the millet farm. So every state that has uh, rice specifically is going to be a lot more valuable. Uh, secondarily, what has been introduced in 1.5.3 is this idea of MAPI or market access price impact. If we look at local prices, we will see that local prices are different than uh, uh, market prices. In general, you are going to want to build and consume everything in the same states where this is critically important is going to be uh, for building construction because construction is kind of the most important thing and so you're going to want the inputs for the construction loop uh, to be in areas where you are building and so states that have iron, coal, and wood together are going to be especially valuable because these will be able to do the iron frame buildings loop in a self-contained way such that you will spend less on construction uh, and so to a lesser extent, uh, when you get start getting into steel frame buildings, it will also be useful to have lead and sulfur in the same states, and this will inform, uh, you know, kind of what states are good. And finally, the third consideration that's going to be kind of important in evaluating these new states is this new companies mechanic, because a lot of the unique companies are tied to states, meaning if you conquer a state, you can gain access to the company, and sometimes you might want to go out of your way to conquer a state just to gain access to a company, and so we will be mentioning a couple of these as we focus on these top five Asian states that you might be sleeping on. All right, first up, we're going to talk about kind of five states that you're probably not sleeping on. You might be conquering in multiple of your games, and uh, let's jump right in. So Beijing is going to be kind of the biggest one, the most important one, the most useful thing to take, and that is because of the Forbidden City here. Nobody's sleeping on this. This is extremely strong. It gives you authority as well as legitimacy from including the head of state and government. It is very good. Uh, secondarily, Brunei, or in this case, it's already been conquered in North Borneo, is also going to be a very important state to take. It has gold, it has a good smattering of resources, and it very importantly gives a market adjacency to Qing, allowing you to trade uh, better with them in the early game. And so this is one of the most useful states to take throughout the game. We, of course, are playing the Dutch East Indies here, so we kind of uh, start with an adjacency to uh, Qing's market. But you can see here, this says Russian market because... Ching is in the Russian market, and so this is going to be something useful because Lanfeng starts as a protectorate. Uh, also coming back to China here, Shenzi is one of the best states in the game. In terms of just raw resources, it is the best state in the game. There's an additional 30 oil that will appear here. It has a ton of arable land potential. It also did get buffed, where it has agriculture and plantations throughput. Very, very, very strong, and this is one uh, that is not really slept on, but it is very, very good. Um, also, we have Perm and Ural, which, okay, they may not be what you think of when you think of Asia, but technically they're in Asia. So Perm and Ural, are, uh, they have gotten considerably better in 1.5, but uh, these are some of the most resource-dense places. Perm, uh, you will have 60 oil appearing here. There's some oil that appears down here as well, but that's a bit of a tangent. Uh, and this is, in my opinion, the best mappy state in the game because you will be getting this logging industry throughput modifier and this Ironman's mining uh, in building throughput, but you no longer have the construction or infrastructure malice that you did in previous patches. So I think in the very early game, Perm is actually the absolute best place to build early on. Uh, Ural also has a little bit better on the mappy in terms of going into the you know mid game because they will have lead, which will allow you to produce glass better because you know uh, as the input of lead is uh, cheaper because you are producing it locally, the glass will be more efficient and then you will consume the glass locally uh, with your construction sectors, which will make the entire loop everything more profitable. The lead will have a higher price when it sells. Uh, the, the mines or the glassworks will have a lower price when it buys. And then the 
construction sectors will have a lower uh, price on the glass when they buy from them. So everything goes in a nice little loop. And uh, Ural slash Perm are kind of two other ones that are very, very strong that I think people aren't sleeping on. And finally, we have Punjab, which is, you know, the very best thing you can get from Chinese states and Chinese states in general, other than loud cars outside, is of course getting a ton of souls, the very most useful resource in Victoria 3. We see here 15 million pops, 15 million pops. If you're going off of China, the previous strategy was you take Beijing and you take Shenzhen and you do it every game. However, sometimes you have a truce with China. The next best place, other than the East India Company, which is, can be hard, kind of hard to get after, to take p provinces just for getting pops is in Punjab. Taking Punjab is still very strong. Um, they notably got, uh, you know, this 20% agriculture and plantations throughput. As far as Mappy is concerned, very nice for building clothes because you can build cotton, dyes, and silk all together. And so this is this is very, very strong. It's got even stronger in 1.5 as a result of, you know, these local prices being a consideration. And so you might want to, you know, go from Sindh into Punjab and turn this into kind of a, a supplier for uh, your textile needs for the rest of your empire in terms of selling, uh, you know, luxury textiles. Because, uh, you know, in a lot of provinces, if you're playing in Europe, you will not have access to dyes or silk uh, in terms of local prices. And so this is still really good. Good. And this is kind of smattering an example of, you know, five states that are really strong uh, in previous patches that remain really strong or have gotten even stronger. You know, Shangzi, just to kind of quickly touch on that one again, uh, where it has the most resources in the game. Really strong mappy here still. Little light on the logging, but we do have the iron mines and the coal mines together, which is going to allow you to build the basic construction loop very, very, very efficiently. So in fifth place, we have North Bengal and to a lesser extent, Delhi. The big, uh, you know, kind of come up here is now they have uh, at not a, just agricultural plantations or agricultural throughput, but also plantations throughput, which is going to be, you know, quite good because they too, just like Punjab, can be building dyes, cotton, and silk in one place. They also have access to opium, but very importantly, they have access to rice. And this is critically why they become, you know, important as a nice hub. You can also build a nice amount of iron mines there, which is going to make you know, building steel and tools there, somewhat reasonable, especially if you play East India Company, which doesn't have access to a lot of coal plus iron states. They only have one. Delhi kind of has a similar situation up here, uh, they, but they are not quite as good because they have a wheat farm. Yuck, not a rice farm. And so the rice farm is going to be very, very nice because you will be able to locally supply all the grain as well as grain to the rest of your country while also, you know, building up uh, the dyes, cottons, and uh, silk. And then you're going to have a very, very nice SOL given what's going on and all these sorts of things. And so that's going to feel quite nice here in North Bengal coming up quite a bit. Uh, in this scrum. For fourth place, we're gonna need to come over to China and take a look at Yunnan. This is the only province uh, of China that has access to both coal and iron and also has rice farms. The majority of the rice farms are in the southern portion of China with wheat up in the north, even though they have subsistence rice farms in the north. And so this is going to make it particularly good uh, because you can build the construction loop, you can build up rice, there will be more demand for grain. And so this is gonna be one of the better places to build rice, especially if you're playing Great Ching. Now, if you're not playing Great Ching, getting in here can be a little weird. You would have to release Yue and then release Yunnan and then come after it. But even still, it's still quite a strong state. Uh, but you notice the resources, not quite as good as Shangzi. Not trying to say it's a better than Shangzi, but that it is one that you maybe want to consider, especially if you're playing China. To a lesser extent, we also have, you know, the Manchuria provinces, which already looks really good, uh, just not quite as good, which these are also having, you know, iron, coal, and logging, and in this case, gold, which is a bit better in 1.5 than it was previously. Uh, and we see the same thing here, and same thing here, where we, in addition to lead, where we are getting a nice smattering of resources, but they're not quite as good with the wheat farm. So I really did want to highlight Yunnan as kind of being a special feature. Uh, another one that's a little bit special is Shaozhou, uh, because it does have this uh, natural harbors, so it is going to be better to be building the navy in. It is the province with natural harbors. It does still have iron, specifically, and it has rice farms, but Yunnan is kind of the standout, uh, being the only place that has coal, 
iron, and uh, rice. There are actually very few provinces in the game that have coal, iron, and rice. There's like one in here, and Hara that has it. Uh, there's one over here that has it. But for the most part, it is a little bit of a rare phenomenon. And we have the 17 logging on top, which means you are going to be able to build 15, 20 construction sectors, locally supply the goods, and you are going to be ha able to have cheaper construction and more profitable resource industries. In third place, we're going to need to come over to Korea to take a look at Gwanbuk, which had uh, sulfur added to it. So now it has the full rainbow. That's right. Every single mineable resource in the game it has, uh, you know, iron, coal, lead, and sulfur. You know, in previous patches, the fact that these are not over level 51 uh, was a little bit of a disadvantage, but that is less important now. Um, 51 being giving you access to the max economies of scale. You also have a decent amount of logging camps, some fishing wharves. Uh, arable land does have the rice right and so this is going to be outstanding but also korea in general has really good mappy uh you know taking a look iron coal rice uh down here you know and over here we have iron lead gonna be a great place to build glass logging and uh rice and you know here uh coal rice and etc mostly etc you also have access to both silk and cotton don't have access to the dyes that's fine uh you know you have a little bit of sulfur here and overall your mappy looks really good but guan book is the particular place that is going to be outstanding um you know it was a buff because mappy became important and it was a buff because they added sulfur if i'm not mistaken they might have added a couple other resources here and there but now it's a very resource dense place and it might be a place you actually want to go after in terms of conquest you know you get a decent chunk of pops uh, in some of these states which you will be you know uh, I believe I'm not sure if the number is one or two million which is the the cap for infamy and so when you are way over the cap this is advantageous they have several high you know population uh, states at the very start of the game you know it's nothing to sneeze at 15 mil pops uh, you go for a protectorate and then you eventually look to incorporate them and I think it's an overall pretty solid place to maybe go after now but Guanbuk being the uh, in particular single state stand out here from the consideration of Mappy. For second place, we're going to need to first take a look at the Kaiping Mining Company, which I think is one of the premier companies which is locked behind the state of Hebei. It might be changed in, you know, future uh, updates here, but currently it's locked behind Hebei. I know it says Beijing or Hebei, uh, but you have to have a coal mine that is greater than level 10, and Beijing doesn't have any coal, so that means Hebei is going to be second place for us here uh, in terms of states you might be sleeping on, and I think, generally speaking, Hebei is going to be better better to take than Shangzi now. Shangzi does have better resources, but Hebei does have pretty good resources, having a decent chunk of, you know, iron, sulfur, and coal. It's going to be good for Mappy. Uh, you can notably, with the sulfur, you can build up into dyes with the, the dye manufacturer, and then you will also have cotton and silk, so this is pretty nice for the perspective of being able to produce clothes and having all the inputs for that. Um, you know, you don't have, like Shangzi, you do not have, uh, you know, any sort of uh, state bonus for either agriculture or plantations like you do here in Shangzi, uh, but you have access to the very strong Kaiping Mining Company, which we'll take a closer look at now. So taking a look at the Kaiping Mining Company, uh, we're going to need to talk about kind of the three things that I think are principally important uh, when evaluating companies. The first is resource industries are generally going to be better because those industries tend to be better. Uh, you tend to want to lean into those, build a little bit more of those, and eventually you are capped. Um, what the companies are giving you is they are giving you uh, throughput and construction speed primarily as their biggest bonus and so the throughput when you can no longer build any more of those buildings as is the case with coal mines eventually the throughput is going to be particularly nice and the construction is going to be nice uh, specifically in a different context so we have resources are really important because uh, when construction is really important is uh, in terms of the proportion of your economy, uh, it is going to be the higher proportion of your economy in terms of construction a building is, the more you are going to value having both construction and throughput on it. We see here we have 24 railways in our country and 26 coal mines. We actually have way more construction sunk in on the railways, though, uh, because the mines are only costing 400 construction. The railways cost 
800 construction and so getting that extra construction speed on the railways is really good um, railways will occupy a decent chunk of your economy in terms of the overall construction used and so it will also be really good you know the throughput will be particularly good on railways but like the third thing we want to talk about is the more throughput you have on a building the less useful it is and so generally speaking uh, you will not have throughput on your railways and so gaining throughput on the railways is particularly useful so railway companies in general look useful but we have you know pinned onto it a resource in the form of the coal mines and there's only three companies in the game if i'm not mistaken right now that have uh, or four there's four uh that have access to the combo railway and coal or railway plus resource in this case railway plus coal and so this is going to make the kaiping mining company one you might want to hunt for uh in addition to the useful things that uh, for taking hey bay and so you know uh shenzi just has a ton of resources uh in terms of why you would want to take it but hey bay once you incorporate it will give you access to this company and so you have a combination of having a lot of resources or a decent chunk of resources the loud car outside again just roaring through the you know thing and having a decent a very large chunk of population to give you access to more souls and so you know you're probably going to want to i think i think that what has changed is instead of taking beijing into shangzi uh, over the course of two wars get, gaining war reps as well you'll probably want to take beijing into hebei over the course of two wars and that this will look a little bit better and so hebei we have in second place uh four companies that you are going to want to take or sorry four states that you might be sleeping on in patch one 5.3 just a bit as a bit of an honorable mention i think the other company that you're going to maybe want to go after in asia is going to be taking bombay in order to gain access to this company bombay as a state uh pretty solid doesn't have too much in terms of the resources but does have a ton of arable lands and notably the rice farms you will have to fight the east india company to take it but outside of this you know we have rice farms dye plantations cotton plantations i don't think we have a special bonus well, we do have a little bit of a natural harbors action but the main thing to write home about in this sort of consideration and can be easy to sleep sleep on is the tata company which is giving you plus 10 max weekly construction progress so your buildings will be built faster now of course this makes it so you can allocate more construction per building it doesn't just give you 10 extra free construction or something like this uh, but instead of you know 20 construction being allocated a week you can allocate 30 a week uh, something to this effect um, but also what we are going to have here is the construction sector building throughput which is an interesting modifier at first blush it just seems well is this really that useful most of the cost of construction in general is going to be in the goods not the labor and so the construction sector or throughput in general is going to increase the input goods and it's going to increase the output and so it's like well i could just add five percent more construction sectors and it'd be roughly equal however with mappy you want your construction sectors to be where you have the resources and you want the, or sorry where you have like steel and glass and tools and you want steel and glass and tools in these mappy states right where like like guanbuk uh which are having you know access to iron and coal to go into the steel uh lead mines to go into uh the glass and sulfur mines to go into the explosives factories that are feeding back into all of these mines and so because of this you know the throughput uh looks a lot better than it is and will actually you know end up reducing um the price of your uh of your construction by a, a decent enough chunk that i think it is a consideration it's not quite like having five percent free construction uh because i won't reduce it that much but it will uh, reduce uh you know kind of uh some sort of price nudging that you have where if you were to build you know in places other than guan book let's say if you're playing korea you will end up paying, you know, uh, 5, 10, 20 percent more on construction. And so this ends up uh, reducing uh, the amount by which you're paying extra and will lead to savings of, uh, you know, a few percent in terms of your overall construction cost, uh, effectively allowing you to add more construction if you wanted to. Um, and so this is going to be a, a relatively nice company. Now, we're putting it in as an honorable mention here in Bombay because I don't really think it's worth going out of your way to take Bombay. But I think that perhaps this might be stronger than I think 
think, and so I wanted to talk about it. And it is interesting to think about, uh, you know, things in the context of grabbing stuff for the companies, um, especially, you know, in other areas. Asia overall doesn't have the best companies. The Kaiping Mining Company is kind of the really big one. There are some Japan ones that are locked behind Japanese culture. But I did just want to point out Tata, which has been buffed in update 1.5.3 from 1.5.2. Finally, in first place, we have the massively buffed Persia, and I mean Persia in general, all of it. Uh, there used to only be one province with both coal and iron in it, and this was the Ishfan, uh, which used to also not have any logging, and now there's four logging camps. This place used to have, I think, coal and 12 logging camps. Now it has 20 logging camps, uh, and we're going to have a ton of these coal, iron, logging, coal, iron, logging, uh, and some fish. Uh, does this one? Yeah, coal, iron, uh, logging and sulfur, coal iron, or sorry, not that, coal iron logging, and this is also the most populous uh, state to be building in. And so it's gotten spectacular in terms of mappy. You're going to be able to construct, uh, like locally, uh, steel tools, uh, you know, uh, in just about in so many of the provinces in Persia, which is insane because you're coming from a place where there wasn't a single state ha that had all of coal, iron, and wood uh, because this state here, which did have both, you know, uh, coal and iron, uh, it had no logging now it doesn't have a ton of logging and that's okay but that's also not all uh not only that they have massively buffed the amount of arable land uh that is present here in persia one moment so there's so much more arable land here in Persia than there used to be. Uh, and also there's better potentials. Now in a ton of these places you can make cotton silk dyes and they have way more arable land than they do peasants, which was not the case before. Everywhere, way more arable land than peasants, which means not only are you going to you know, be able to build a lot more of this agrarian stuff if you were so inclined, uh, you can build almost anything now. You did not used to be able to build tobacco, which is weird because they have a tobacco company. I think the company is okay, but not insane. A lot of people think it's really good because uh, it gives, uh, as its bonus, 20% um, tax spread. But I, I think this is not maybe moving the needle so much. Uh, but the main point is you have a bunch of unused arable land, which is going to allow you to pull in so many migrants. Um, whether you start as Persia or you take Persia later, uh, you are going to notice when you come into the population tab, they are going to have a traction that is positively buffed by unused arable land relative to the rest of the area way better migration attraction it's like a new world country just smack in the middle of you know uh, the old world, as it were, and so this is going to make Persia a way better start, and also, you know, in terms of playing Persia, they can do corn laws in 1.5 pretty easily just by mobilizing their army, and so they're going to look absolutely spectacular, and going to be really fun to play as, and this is new as of 1.5.3 with all the buffed land, and so this is going to make them much, much better, and, you know, the wildly huge improvement uh, relative to just 1.5.2, and so this has been kind of the top five list of uh, states you might be sleeping on in 1.5.3. We first talked about states you're probably not sleeping on, and then we talked about, you know, the top five. Uh, the first one being uh, North Bengal, which I don't think we emphasized does have 25 million pops or 24 something at the st game start, and so it's going to have an enormous amount of population in addition to uh, being probably the best province for rice in the entire game, uh, and can also do, you know, cotton dyes silk uh, together and do clothing, and has a gigantic amount of logging camps can do furniture there very well as well and has a smattering of logging camps and it's like well okay uh then we talked about yunnan probably best rice uh you know province in china because it is going to have access to the good map of iron and coal plus rice uh then we talked about guanbuk and a uh, korea in general uh this is a full rainbow mappy state where it has every single mineable resource and all of these states have access to rice farms which again big buffs, uh, but also, you know, Korea in general, proportion of its states having access to, you know, really good resources is extremely high. You know, China has some of the best mappy states in the game, but as a proportion of all of its states, it's relatively low, so you will run out of places to build construction sectors uh, at an earlier date in the game than other countries will, uh, and especially Korea, because, you know, you will fully expand them in Hebei, you'll fully expand them in Yunnan, you'll fully expand them in uh, Shanxi, and all these with Qing, uh, but you will eventually still want more construction sectors still. And then in second place,
place, we talked about Hey Bay, which gives you access to the Kai Ping Mining Company, which I think is going to be kind of the premier. Uh, we're taking the state for the company company in, uh, you know, uh, overall in Asia, uh, you know, giving us access to uh, a resource plus railway uh, company, which we explained is really good because throughput is going to be really valuable on railways because they're throughput and construction because they are a large portion of your economy. They start with zero throughput to begin with. So it will be actually just a full 20% more on your railways instead of if you already had 50% throughput, it's effectively, you know, 13 and a half or roughish uh, percent improvement on your outputs and also we have coal which is uh you know going to be good especially in the late game when you start running out the throughput on the resources will be extremely strong and finally in first place we have persia and i mean all of it and it's just wildly buffed it's wildly buffed on all of the resources and it's widely buffed on the arable land as well as the max arable land so it's going to be wildly buffed from a migration perspective and so you know in in previous times the the new world states are really good to go after because in terms of uh proportion of like arable arable land ratio uh, to the amount of infamy you gain. They're really, really good. Um, and resources per uh, infamy is also really good. Now, Persia, with this extra arable land, and as well as, uh, you know, a ton of extra resources, looks a whole lot more like that, but it's also, like, located in a pretty good spot for, in terms of taking it, because, you know, getting adjacencies to the Ottoman Empire, uh, you know, and all these Central Asian ones uh, can be something you really value. It'll also give you a Russia adjacency. It's probably the best source of a Russia adjacency for gaining, you know, trade, uh, whether you're starting as Persia or you're taking it later. Uh, and so, this one, I think, is going to really, really stand out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the YouTube algorithm stuff. And other than that, I hope the cars aren't as loud where you are and have a good day.